This is KHQA News at 6. Even despite the warmer temperatures today, snow did fall across the tri-states. This should be it for a while, and the warm-up will get underway. We'll tell you about it in the full forecast coming up. Quite a bit of uh, little events here and there, and over the last couple weeks, we've been out a lot. So we have used a lot of salt up. As area drivers see unthinkable amounts of snow this winter, city officials say they have more than enough supplies to handle things. Plus, natural gas prices to reach record highs. What that means for you. From around the Tri-States, this is KHQA News at 6. Good evening and thanks for joining us. I'm Amber Robb. Lots of cold and snow and we're only halfway through the week. Let's check in with our chief meteorologist Rich Kane for the game plan for the next few days. I put this in perspective, Amber. At least we're a little more than halfway through the month of February, and that is good news. But in the meantime, snow does continue to fall across parts of the tri-states, mainly east of the Mississippi River. Still a couple of moderate snow bands across southern Pike County, Missouri, and that uh, goes into northern Lincoln County as well. So the snow is beginning to wrap up, even seeing a little sprite of sunshine across parts of Macon County. Temperature is in the mid and upper teens at this hour, and it feels more like the low and mid mid single digits across a good chunk of the region we will fall back down into the mid single digits overnight with a light breeze as this all wraps up. Maybe some patchy fog late tonight. More clouds and sunshine tomorrow, but maybe a few peaks in the afternoon as we top out right around 20, even lower 20s. And we'll tell you about the other good news on the long range coming up in just a few minutes. But the snow is falling across a good chunk of the tri-states as you relax at home as we take a live look with our KHQA storm runner and see how the roadways are looking. Uh, keep in mind, if you decide to step out, that there are areas that will be on the slick side. And our storm runner is located south of Hannibal. We've got uh, some snow, but not much. But as traffic is continuing to pick up as folks leave from work, keep this in mind. With the warmer temperatures and the additional snowfall, even despite the roads being treated, and cleared, there may be a couple of slick spots, so take your time driving so you don't lose control of that car. Thanks, Rich. At this week's city council meeting, area officials announced the city will receive 700 tons of salt to clear area roadways. At the beginning of the year, the city ordered 3,200 tons of salt to help drivers maneuver through the streets. KHQA's Kendall Hyde is in studio to tell us what this means for Gem City drivers. Kendall? The city of Quincy ordered another 700 tons of salt, but the latest supply is not due to a lack of resources. The city likes to stock the salt dome back up to stay ready for any unforeseen circumstances. Kevin McLean, the director of central services, says the salt will be purchased through the motor fuel tax. Since January, Quincy has battled a New Year's ice storm and nearly six to seven inches of snow within the past few weeks. When the temperatures are this cold, we also apply calcium, liquid calcium to the salt. Um, we have sprayers and tanks that are on the trucks and they spray right into the spinner. So when the salt comes out, there's also liquid calcium on that. McLean says the city has used nearly 2,000 tons of salt in the first two months alone. He expects Quincy will use another 3,500 tons in the near future. Tonight on Case Trade News at 10, I'll be telling you about how the city of Quincy goes about using the area salt supplies, as well as how area drivers are feeling about driving in these wintry conditions. In studio, Kendall High, Case Trade News. Thanks, Kendall. The Arctic cold front is causing natural gas prices to reach record highs. KHQA's Sarah Rosenthal checked in with one tri-state community about what the spike means for residents and how it's created a need for federal and state assistance. Pittsfield City officials classify these wintry conditions as a natural disaster that's expected to take a major toll on natural gas utility costs. And they say pipeline restrictions are expected to drive those costs even higher. Pittsfield Economic Director Ed Knight says a bidding war started last Friday when natural gas suppliers learned they couldn't keep up with the demand. Knight says natural gas cost $3 per decatherm at the beginning of the day on Friday. That increased to around $225 per decatherm by the end of the day. That's around a 7,500% increase. The school normally uses 500 therms a day, uh, which averages out to about their cost at, at $500 a day for natural gas. With this rate increase, they're looking at $11,000 a day 
distant gas prices. He says those prices remained in effect on Saturday, Sunday, and Monday due to the holiday weekend. So we had to go in and buy additional gas to cover our demand at the $225 a decatherm rate. We had no choice because we were going to run out. Knight says the market recently dropped to $132 per decatherm. Mayor John Hayden is asking the community and outside resources to step up in order to get utility prices under control. By not using as much, it's saving them some money and obviously saving us too. And uh, again, the numbers that were being thrown out with something like a school are, are unbelievable too. So. Uh, we know that we have a tremendous problem here that, that we need help. And without the help from state legislators, the increasing natural prices could cost the city of Pittsfield millions of dollars. Community energy co-ops are asking residents across the tri-states to keep temperatures on thermostats as low as possible, unplug or turn off non-essential appliances, and avoid using large appliances to help keep your utility bills under control during this time. In studio, Sarah Rosenthal, KHQA News.